Hi guys, Becca here. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about a very important update from the UK's Home Office to all health and care visa holders who are in the UK. There's a little bit of updates that I have from the UK Home Office to all health and care visa holders, which are healthcare professionals who are in the uk on sponsorship visa and if you are in the uk but uk is not your final destination then definitely um this update might not be of interest to you this video or this update is for those who are on sponsorship visa and the health and care visa who want to step up to getting their residency in the uk you know that um, if you want to settle in the UK, you need to apply for what we call the indefinite leave to remain. And as part of the requirement, you must be with a sponsored employer. And there are a lot of requirements that you must meet. And as part of it, if you want to do extra hours out of that first employer, you should do only 20 hours outside of this first employer. There have been a lot of questions that people have asked me in my DM, my friends from my old trust. They are quite confused. They don't know because they are doing bank shifts, but some people are scaring them saying that the bank shift that they are doing is counting as an extra work or probably you are in the UK, your employer is not getting you shifts. You want to go elsewhere to get shifts. People are confused. They don't know what this 20 hours means. And so I've got this information, this letter that I had, and this is directly from the UK Home Office explaining to us what this 20 hours means or what amounts to the 20 hours. So without wasting any of your time, I'll go right into reading the letter and explaining to you and also breaking down how you can accrue or accumulate these 20 hours in today's video. If it is your first time of coming across my channel in my space, hi, my name is Becca. I'm a migrant nurse or I'm an immigrant nurse originally from Ghana in West Africa. I practice, I live, and I work in the United Kingdom as a registered nurse on this channel. Basically, I talk about nursing, I do lifestyle vlogs, videos, a little bit of me, fun and positive vibes here and there. Right, so let me just read the letter and break it down as I said, okay? So we all know that beforehand, you could only do 20 hours as per every skilled worker in the UK. Then along the line, when COVID came, these restrictions were lifted and people used this opportunity to make themselves rich because you, can, you could work as many, many, many hours as you wanted, either with your first employer or with a secondary employer it didn't really matter and then when covid eased or when covid came down this 20 hour restriction was reinstated and then along the line something really happened i don't know what happened it was taken off again and now from the 27th of august it was brought back which i did a video to share a lot of people still had questions about where this update came from so i'm going to read this um you know this information and then break it down for you so on the 27th of august the government reintroduced the 20 hours per week limit on supplementary income for those on health and care worker visa bringing it in line with the rest of the skilled worker visa rules so as we know all the other skilled workers if your employer has contracted you let's say 30 hours a week 36 hours a week 48 hours a week 33 hours a week whatever hours a week you can do extra 20 hours you can go outside of that employer to do extra 20 hours so now it applies to all visa holders including the health and care visa holders however supplementary income should be understood as work outside of your main job and can be taken in the same occupational code and at the same level of your main job or in the same shortage occupation, right? So, for example, let's say you were a nurse, okay, and you want to go and do outside work of 20 hours. You must do this work as a nurse. You can't do it as a carer. Or, for instance, if you're a band five and you want to go and do outside work, you must do it as a band five and not as a band six. In a nutshell, it should be within the same shortage occupation code. A carer's shortage occupation code is different from a nurse. A nurse's own is different from a doctor. So if you are going outside to do supplementary work, you should maintain that same shortage occupation code and that same level of your job that you are doing. You shouldn't either step down or go above it. Yeah? And it's also saying that this supplementary income means that going only outside of your main employer now this is why i'm going to clarify the confusion it says over time with the employer who issued you certificate of sponsorship 
does not count as supplementary employment and you can work as many hours as agreed with that employer so for instance let me give myself as an example let's say i've been contracted my contract now is 37.5 hours and let's say that my employer is happy to give me three extra shifts every week which is another 36 hours on top of what i am doing as far as the employer is happy to give me that shift and i am happy to do that shift we have both agreed if it is that same employer that gave you the cos you can do as many 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 hours as you want as far as both of you have agreed and as far as you have opted out of the 48 hour clause so in the uk we have something that we call the 48 hour opt out so if you have or if you're happy to work more than 48 hours a week which is legally you shouldn't go above but if you're happy to do that and you've signed that 48 hour opt out it means you can work as many many many, many hours as you want as far as your employer is happy and you are happy and both of you have agreed to have this going on now if you're in a care home this is very simple because if that same employer has given you the cos it's quite straightforward you can do as many many hours as you want as far as the home has shift for you and as far as you also is happy to do the shift now if you're in the nhs i've explained this before in a video if you're in the nhs and you are doing bank shifts what happens is that some of the NHSs have their banks entrusted to third parties. So on your pay slip, you have two different pay slips, which states another, let's say, provider, which is offering that extra shift or that uh, NHSP or that bank shift. If that is the case, you need to clarify with the trust. Yeah, that is this counted as a secondary job. The trust is the best to explain. Home office has made it clear that once your COS is issued from one employer, they are happy for you to work with that employer. So if your trust is not, um, you know, hasn't given their bank shift to a third party, then you can do as many hours of bank shift in that same trust. Your 20 hours will only count if you are going outside to do like agency shift or extra shift in another place where that employer is not the one that issued you your COS. So I think I've answered this very question that I'm putting on the screen where this lady is asking whether she can do NHS bank and still do agency. Yes, you can. As far as your NHS bank is provided by your primary um, employer and they are the ones that give you COS. You can do bank and you can do your main shift and then you can go and do your overtime in another place. If your bank shift have been worked with the trust or employer who issued you your COS, then this will not count as supplementary income and you will not be subject to the 20 hour limit. I hope this is clear. If you decide to work more than 48 hours a week in total, you will need to opt out. Further details can be found here. I'll leave the link as well if you want to read about opting out of the 48 hour, you know, clause or contract that is um, legal. The legal hour limit that you can go per week. If you want to opt out of it, it means you can do more hours as far as your strength permits you. However, in some trust, the policy now is that if you work, let's say, three continuous shifts or four continuous shifts, you must have two off days you can't have one off day so every trust has their own local policy which you also must make sure that you inquire about so that it's it's in line with what the home office is saying working additional shift with the same employer whilst you are on paid annual leave will not count as supplementary income yeah so let's say you're on annual leave your maternity leave you're on whatever leave but you are happy to come and work or you, you saw your annual leave you want to come and work as far as your employer has agreed and is in line with what the home office is saying, you can go ahead and do it. I know some of the trust, again, it's based on the institution's policy. Some institutions do not allow you to come and work on your annual leave. Some also allow you to sell your annual leave. Some will buy your annual leave. Some will let you carry over your annual leave to another year. It all depends on institutional level, so you would have to clarify that with your employer. But most of the times when people are on leave, Employers are happy for them to come and cover shifts if they are happy. And this is also agreed and it doesn't affect your indefinite leave to remain. However, if you were to work for another employer or trust, then this would be considered supplementary employment and therefore subject to 20 hour limit. So let's say you are on annual leave with your primary employer, the one that gave you COS, but you want to go and do extra shift in another place. It is acceptable. You can do that. 
but you must remain within your 20-hour clause. Working more than this limit in a week would constitute a breach of your condition of stay. So this means that if you are going to apply for your indefinite leave to remain in the future and they realize that you have worked more than the 20 hours with a supplementary employer or with a secondary employer, it can affect your indefinite leave to remain. This goes back to what I said in the beginning, that if your aim is not to apply for ILR or if your aim is not to stay in UK on a permanent residence, then this law really, really does not hold you down because... You are not going to do any application where they're going to check all of these things on the background. Now, if you are on a sponsorship visa where your employer is not getting you extra shit, but you want to go out and go and do extra shit, you can do so with a bank or a, an agency. I mean, if I say a bank, a bank shift with another trust, or you can do agency where you are sent to other places to take up extra shifts and you must still stay within your 20 hours. Even if your employer is not getting you shift, that doesn't matter. Because on your contract, that is the visa that brought you into the UK. So even if you are not getting you shift or whatever, you must stick to whatever is written on that paper and go by only doing extra 20 hours with a supplementary employer. What this means is that there are some trusts that have shifts like the twilight shift, the you know short shift, they have like from 8 to 4, they have from 12 to 6, they have shifts like that where you can do eight hours in a week or sorry, eight hours per shift or six hours per shift. If that is the case, you can do such a shift and you can do one long 12 hour shift and then put together will make up to your 20 hours. When we say the 12 hours, your break is included, right? So even if it's paid or unpaid for that whole shift is 12 hours, even if you are paid for 11 hours. Is calculated as 12 so you have to do if you want to go overboard you can do like a twilight shift or a short shift with the trust that agrees on if you are in a trust that do not have such shift in place what you can do is that let's say for instance in where I work our week starts on Sunday right so on Sunday let's say you've done one shift here yeah? then on Saturday into Sunday you can do one shift so that Saturday into Sunday, if the shift started from 7 to 12 midnight, that is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That is 5 hours. It's going to add to your 12 hours that you did on Sunday. And the remaining 7 hours is going to carry over to the next shift. However, you need to explain this to whoever is doing the, I mean the, um, the calculation that this is it. Because when they are paying you, they can now divide it into two because the i do agency and the agency i do or the agents i work with that is how it is calculated so any shift you do up to midnight they split that they they separate the midnight from the rest of the shift so it doesn't look like it's the same shift so if that is the case you need to clarify with your agent or your payroll or whoever if they can do it like that for you then you can justify your 20 hours but if that is not the case and they count everything as one, then you need to really be careful with doing um, 20 hours. And if your employer is not getting you shift, the best thing to do is to go out to do agency, which I've shared a lot of companies that can give you extra shift or overtime, you know, to cover up for the 20 hours to keep you running whilst you look for a sponsorship visa to switch on. So this is just the update I have got. If you still have any questions, Put them in the comment section and let me see how best I can go about it. Thank you so much for watching, for constantly coming back to the channel. Until we meet again in my next video, guys.